we continue our pace with the day's conversation. Time to navel gaze on Mata's health for the next 45 or so minutes and we look deeper into what LFS is. That is a Liframinis syndrome. A rare condition, as most will term it, not so much talked about, but that is what you're said to be looking into. And I have created first time for the scene with uh, Joyce Wamboy Mwangi to my far right. Yes, that is who is a caregiver, as well as the director of communications at LFS Africa. And right next to her is Dr. Samuel Omolo, who's the LFS chapter chair. Lady and gent, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just start with you, Dr. Tari, and just for the purpose of context and for basics. Liframinis syndrome. What is this? Uh, thanks so much, uh, Kenya and Africa this time to talk about uh, Liframini syndrome. Uh, I'm Samuel Omolo from Liframini Syndrome Association. Maybe just to introduce our organization first. Okay. Uh, we are an organization based in uh, Boston in the US, mm -hmm. in Hilliston, and with uh, chapters all over the world. Mm -hmm. And we found it very important to have an African chapter, which is the baby of the whole organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, started uh, a year and a half ago, the African chapter, and there was only the person on board. Now the chapter is growing. And to talk about Liframini syndrome, this is a genetic, uh, rare genetic predisposition that predisposes patients to cancer. And not only cancer, multiple types of cancer. And uh, this was discovered in the late 1960s by Dr. Lee and Dr. Framini. Yeah. Uh, the late Dr. Lee and Dr. Framini is still alive, okay. who are also members of the Liframini Syndrome Association. Mm -hmm. This uh, genetic predisposition uh, increases the risk of one having cancer. Mm -hmm. And not only cancer, multiple types of cancer. Okay. And uh, that is the, the brief definition of Liframini Syndrome. Mm -hmm. It's caused by a mutation, an inherited mutation, mm -hmm. which is just a defect in uh, the gene, not the genes we wear, mm. but the gene that carries biological information in human being in a gene called TP53 gene. Mm. TP53 gene is like the guardian of the human body. Mm. The, it, it moves around the body inspecting for mistakes, genetic mistakes in the body, and it corrects. Mm. And where it's not corrected, then it leads to cancer. Mm. Yes. So TP53 is um, the technical term, but yes. ideally you're talking about a guardian kind of gene. This is what you're basically saying. Yes. T TP53 gene is uh, the single most important gene when it comes to cancer. All right. Because you'd find that for any other type of cancer, you'll find a mutation in TP53 gene. So it's a very important gene when it comes to uh, cancer. Mm -hmm. Then it also, uh, you can imagine, uh, like the police of the human cell. Mm. It keeps inspecting the cells and checking if there are genetic mistakes, then it corrects. Mm. But in scenarios where uh, the damage is far too gone, then uh, it leads to cancer. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you had earlier on talked about either in terms of multiplication or deletion of this particular gene. Just basically explain to us in a layman's language how does this occur before i get to, to joyce uh, thank you very much so what happens is that uh, uh, when uh, families pass generational information from your grandfather to your father and to your uh, the current population mm -hmm. uh, mothers donate one copy of the gene okay and fathers donate another copy of the gene i want to make it as basic as possible exactly and then this forms the offspring but occasionally uh, there are things that make genes become deleted mm. either radiation environmental factors or even particular enzymes within our body mm. and cells also make copies of themselves every day and that's why we are growing from being young to mm. being adults mm. so during a, a process we call replication just making several copies of uh, the cells mm -hmm. so uh, w in the process of making several copies of the cells in the body, mm -hmm. and also DNA makes the turnover is big, mm -hmm. there are m mistakes that occur in these cells, okay. in these genes. Mm -hmm. And these mistakes, some of them are inherited. Mm -hmm. A gene can either be deleted in the process. Mm -hmm. or in the process of this making? Yes, right. coping. Okay, coping. It, it's not yes. making, it's coping. Yes. <laughs> okay. Or it can either be duplicated. 
Yeah. Mm. So this is what brings about the problem. And these deletion or uh, mutations are inherited over generations. Mm. Yes. I believe now it's now clearer. Yeah. So that as we continue conversing about LFS, then we know what exactly we're talking about. Yes. And it's also important to note that for Liframini syndrome, while you are testing, we test for TP53 gene mutation specifically because it's been uh, highly uh, uh, studied mm -hmm. and uh, one of our colleagues who is also a member of Liframini Syndrome Association, Dr. David Melkins from Canada, mm -hmm. after the work of Dr. Lee and Dr. Framini, mm -hmm. he discovered that a mutation in TP53 gene causes Liframini Syndrome. Mm -hmm. So right now it's very clear a mutation in this gene that you're talking about yes. that would copy itself yes. is what causes Liframini syndrome. And when then Liframini syndrome mm -hmm. predisposes you to a very high risk of cancer. The multiple cancers yes. now. And in various parts of the body, you right. get uh, one patient this year, you have uh, retinoblastoma, next year you could have a brain tumor, uh, the next month it could, it's, it's, it's repeated in multiple types of I cancer. I hear you. Yes. Well said. Joyce, just before we go to your role as the Director of Communications, LFS Africa, yes. you have a story. Yeah. I mean, you have been in that position where you have had to really take care of two cancer patients, one being your husband and the next one your daughter. Just, just walk me through this journey. Yeah. In 2010, mm -hmm. I lost my husband to colon cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, Sorry for your loss. Thank you. So I, I kept asking, what, you know, he was an orphan mm. and he had lost a sister and a brother. But, and the mother also died. Uh, he would say the mother had a tumor in the stomach. Mm. The brother had, uh, had a tumor, I think, on the leg. Mm -hmm. But they, it happened in the village long ago, so nothing. They, there was nothing that was done about it. You know, in uh, in Africa, yeah. some of these things happen, and you think it's witchcraft, or mm. so it's not medical. It's from yeah. one person to the next to the next. Yeah, thing. it's happening to the same family, oh, so yeah. no one bothered to to do the LFS test. Mm -hmm. So. At one time during his treatment, I asked the doctor, could it be something in the family that is being inherited? Because I, I googled a lot about cancer and I knew there is cancer that is inherited. Yeah, so the doctor said, uh, it could be, the doctor also wasn't sure about it. Wasn't sure about what, LFS? Yes, okay. didn't mention about LFS. I don't know if he knew about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was worried maybe it could happen to my child who she was three years then. As at that time. Yeah, so I was asking is there something I should do before when she's still young? Okay. Yeah. When was this diagnosis? For, your husband. for my husband, it was two zero zero seven eight. There. What stage was this? At stage four. So this was really far much. Yeah, he much he went to the hospital, getting different treatment before the cancer was diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for your daughter, what time and what cancer are we talking about? Yeah, for my daughter, she was diagnosed uh, in the year two zero zero seven. Still. Yes. Okay. For her, once. She kept complaining of pain on her leg, mm. especially after games. Mm -hmm. So at times we would just massage, but there's this time she had a lot of pain. Mm. So I, I started thinking, could it be cancer? So I took her to the hospital, they did an x-ray and so there was something, they said something like a tumor. Mm -hmm. They wanted to do further testing here in Kenya, mm. but thinking of the family, mm -hmm. I rushed her to India, mm -hmm. yeah, where she was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, cancer of the bone. Osteosarcoma? Yes. This is now in 2007? Seven. Seven. So she was no, 
2017 oh, for my daughter. daughter is yes. 2017. When she was 11. Okay. Yeah. But there's something you've just said there that, you know, rushed her to India very quickly. And we'll come up to that in a short while when it comes to even having confidence yeah. in our own facilities and how we can improve, mm. improve that. But mm -hmm. then let me come back to you, Dr. Tari. So now we understand what LFS is and also we've picked Joyce's story so that we can relate what, what, what basically we're talking about. Yes. But, um, Again, for purpose of context and understanding, so are there symptoms that one needs to be looking at very quickly? Just leave the fact that it could predispose you to the different types of cancers. Yeah. Because you realize that when you start seeing these cancers, for example, an individual who has breast, cervical at the same time, then it could ring something to your head. But before then, what are we looking at? Uh, that's a very good question. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the whole world we have a population of uh, close to 8 billion people. Yeah. So you cannot do genetic screening for everyone. Mm -hmm. So uh, through scientific research and uh, medical awareness, mm -hmm. protocols have been developed to screen for these particular families, rare families. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, captured in what we call uh, Crompet Criteria. So Crompet Criteria gives us a written protocol on how to identify these families. Mm -hmm. Number one, if you're a doctor or a clinician and you're seeing a patient who, who has a history of uh, what we call Liframini profile types of cancers, beta yeah. nosocomial, breast cancer before age 31, uh, all that Liframini profile, then you would recommend genetic testing for this kind of person. Okay. If this uh, patient has a first degree or second degree relatives mm -hmm. who also have uh, the same type of cancer like what she was mentioning, mm -hmm. then you definitely classify them in the Liframini profile. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is if you're also seeing uh, patterns yeah, that are similar, they're called Liframini life. Yeah. syndromes, yeah. then you'd also recommend genetic testing. Okay. So as patient, um, any type of cancer that falls within this Liframini uh, criterion would prompt a doctor or a patient to look at yeah, mm -hmm. uh, taking up a genetic test. Mm -hmm. Also family history is very important. Mm -hmm. If you know within your family uh, you've had cases of cancer over years, yes. generational, then such kind of families we are looking for them. Mm -hmm. That's our role mm -hmm. uh, of uh, Liframini Syndrome Association, mm -hmm. research, education, uh, and also supporting families mm -hmm. with treatment. History, family history plays a big role especially where multiple types of so cancer So that is record. even the first step. That is the first step. Now that you're talking about family history, let me just yes. come back to Joy. So now, mm. you discovered your husband had the cancer. Mm -hmm. Now your daughter has, and you dug deeper into the family history and you realized it was the same case scenario for the mother, the father, the sister, and the brother. As far as that family history is concerned and even screening, did you go a step further to even just make sure people now that remained within your close family went for this screening or test? We are planning on that mm -hmm. for the remaining sisters. Okay. Yeah. I only have one daughter, mm -hmm. so I don't have other children to mm -hmm. go for screening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we are planning now for the sisters mm -hmm. with him to go for the tests because mm -hmm. the tests are not available in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They have to be sent outside. Is that another problem? Yes, I think we have a problem with the... Uh, we are improving, because by the time my daughter was diagnosed, mm. by then we didn't even have things like PET scan. Mm. Yeah, even the treatment centers were not as many as now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear you, we are improving, but just talk to me also just from experience. To what extent is the magnitude of this problem? Because if Dr. Harry is saying that, early screening and anytime we talk about cancer it's always about we need to do early screening early testing now we have should i say introduction because most of us didn't even know this exists you know what we call lfs yes. and here we are saying that the early testing of this is what could avert the numerous cancers it could cause so then just talk to me about to what extent the magnitude of not having this equipment in kenya is going this this condition or this cancer is related to this condition let's say it's not just the equipment okay. but also knowledge on cancer Tell today me i think many people who know about cancer know it because they have someone 
who has cancer. Mm. Uh, by the time people realize they have cancer, it, when they, they know about it or mm. when a relative has it, mm. that's when now you know things like chemotherapy. Today you ask someone what is chemotherapy, they will think it's a machine. Mm. Yeah. And it's so not. there is little knowledge about cancer. Now Even that, now that you said it, just just tell us what is this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, knowledge. What yeah, is this? it it's because uh, I'm so sure most of us think it's actually a machine. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is uh, the, the the it's a medicine that is given through heavy. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but when you mention chemotherapy, people think it's a kind of machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so you're telling us that also the lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge on cancer. This, I think even the, among the doctors, mm -hmm. the health, the people in health, mm -hmm. yeah. Because someone walks to a hospital, they have all, if I see them, I can tell it's cancer. As a caregiver? Yes. But the doctor can They have all you. the symptoms you can tell, but the doctors start treating something else, so it's infection, it's ulcers. Yeah. Is that true, Doctor? You know that you're a doctor. Is that true? Uh, that's true. And uh, maybe tying it uh, to what you asked first. Mm -hmm. In all these family doctors uh, in practice should emphasize more on family history, mm -hmm. taking family history before they start taking uh, patient through their treatment protocol. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if it runs in your family, you cannot delete it. Yeah. It, it is what it is. Yes. And uh, very soon we, as an association, the gov we'll be in talk with government, talk about policy. There's no policy on this syndrome, mm. yet it's a lethal one. Okay. Uh, the government should even start what we call it runs in uh, your family. Mm. There should be a portal where you can, uh, highly protected, you can run it within your family. Mm -hmm. So before... Uh, you are taken deeper into your treatment, we think about, it runs in your family. Okay. Trying back to diagnostics, there's uh, little information on cancer care, uh, talking about treatment. Mm -hmm. People think uh, cancer is uh, some dark cloud hovering around uh, every family. Not all of them, and not all of them are also caused by a genetic mutation. Mm -hmm. Some are caused by viruses, yeah? like uh, Bucket's lymphoma, mm -hmm. yeah? It's caused by Epstein-Barr virus. We have uh, HPV caused by human papilloma virus. Mm -hmm. Very common and problematic in, in, in Africa and all over the world. Mm -hmm. So diagnosis and information to our doctors is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And that's why as an association, we are giving education priority. Mm -hmm. We have started doing we webinars. We are reaching out to doctors, students within institutions yeah. of higher learning, yeah. oncologists, and telling them. And you'd be surprised. And we'll come to that, the training bit in a short while. But also, we are due for a break at this moment. But when we come back, yes. I really want you to respond to this question that I had asked. Yeah. You know, just borrowing from what Joyce had said, yeah. that as a caregiver, she can spot yes. from the moment she sees someone on the symptoms but the doctor who is the first line of defense would end up treating you for different other stories before we actually come and this could be even five years later and Perfect. the cancer has progressed so mm. even as you think about that we think also about the treatment options yeah. and just boring again from what joy said and how we can improve that in our country okay. we take that breather we circle back with plenty more of that so stay with us We definitely appreciate your valid company and we continue with our conversation on Health Tuesday. Today looking at Liframini Syndrome, LFS, still holding court with Joyce Wamboe Mwangi, who's a caregiver and director of communications at LFS Africa, and also Dr. Samuel Oliech Omolo, who's the LFS chapter chair. Before I come to Joyce, talk about just, you know, the awareness beat as far as the Director of Communications at LFS Africa is concerned. Before you took that break, Doctor, you're telling us about the training beat and how important this is. Just elucidate a bit further on that. Uh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, 
awareness and education is uh, critical when it comes to cancer uh, care and information around the whole world mm -hmm. because it starts with information so what we're doing is uh, we are telling the story of african patient and through research yeah. and through research you don't want to target uh, the people who are not involved. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the frontline mm -hmm. uh, workers who are medical students who will treat us tomorrow in colleges, uh, research institutions, mm -hmm. and also doctors, oncologists who are in practice. Mm -hmm. So we've been rolling out uh, training, in-house training, mm -hmm. uh, webinars with uh, medical students, like yeah. we've done Mount Kenya University. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've done uh, part of University of Nairobi students uh -huh. and today in the evening we are having a session with uh, our colleagues from the University of Utah yes. at Huntsman Cancer Institute and also uh, our colleague from uh, Sick Kids Hospital in Hanover in Germany. Mm -hmm. We are going to talk to stu medical students and oncology from Kenya Medical Training College. The, they're quite a big number with so many campuses mm -hmm. in the whole country mm -hmm. but that gives us a platform to pass information mm -hmm. to uh, students i'm also involved in research mm -hmm. through research and our collaborative partners all over the world mm -hmm. we emphasize on training and these are opportunities for young scientists young doctors to interact with the best even innovators uh, who have discovered a lot all over the world uh, through master's training programs, scholarships, mm. and also passing of information. Okay. Like via an SMS, I can get information from any doctor. Mm. In, uh, in Harvard, I can get information. Doctors in Singapore, doctors in uh, Sao Paulo in Brazil. Mm. This reduces the gap of uh, information flow and what we've been lacking all along. Mm -hmm. And that ties up to what we've been uh, discussing. Yes. Lack of information mm -hmm. and poor diagnosis mm -hmm. has led us to all this problem. Okay. But if we can get it right through uh, screening, rapid screening, mm -hmm. through our genetic counselors, mm -hmm. and then narrowing down to the protocol, as my colleague has clearly put it, mm -hmm. by just listening to a patient mm -hmm. and through family history, mm -hmm in education, you are able to tell that this is a cancer patient. Okay. Yes. Joyce, to what extent are we in as far as this awareness is concerned? Because just when we even talk about cancer itself, not so many of us would even understand just to what extent we are in. Talk of less of more of LFS by itself. Where are we as far as this awareness is? Uh, in LFS, mm -hmm. I think very, very peop few people know about it. Mm. Even the healthcare providers, mm. yeah, They're unfortunately, even them, they don't know. And I think we are very far because even cancer, for them to diagnose cancer, it takes a long time yeah. to get a patient mm -hmm. to the oncologist. Uh -huh. So I think mm -hmm. we we have to start from their training. Okay. Yeah. And if we have to do awareness, mm -hmm. we, we, we shouldn't concentrate on training the oncologists. Mm. We need to train all the health care providers mm -hmm. to tell them these are the telltale signs of cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if someone comes with a blood level that is very low, or lack of appetite, things like... Um, constipation for a long time there are those signs that you can tell you need to this person needs to be checked okay yeah so then you're saying that we shouldn't even be focusing on the oncologist more but also <coughs> yeah the health on care. other health care providers yes yeah. but also we are saying that some of these doctors just as just as you rightfully said that you would even walk in there and they really can't quite tell <clears throat> if this is cancer or not yeah so then that's why they will end up giving you all forms and manner of treatments before the proper diagnosis is done yeah. you sit in the communications docket at lfs yeah what structures perhaps are you putting in place as far as this awareness creation is concerned and knowledge so that it can reach a multitude of people we are talking about 50 mm. million kenyans mm. What structures are in place for this? We, we are, that's why we are training uh, students okay. who are in medical field. Okay. You know, once they learn now, once they are posted to different places, mm -hmm. they will have knowledge of, more knowledge of LFS and cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also plan to maybe, how, how can we help uh, other 
you know, in Nairobi, maybe the doctors know a bit of cancer. Mm -hmm. But now out of Nairobi, we need maybe to have uh, to have trainings mm -hmm. all over. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah you. So it's just more of training and training and training. Yes. This is what will help and to some extent. Yes. And maybe to have a written protocol mm -hmm. to the healthcare providers to tell them if a patient comes, mm. if you see these signs, please send them for a scan or for these tests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me just pick it up with, on that note that having a written protocol, just as Joyce is rightfully saying, that if a patient comes then and they, you see these symptoms, you see this, and then this will tell you something. And there's something that she also said, which you really agreed with, that, that times, and I've said it often times, yeah, the doctor will treat you for something entirely different. And this could even Good. go for years. Good. But as a doctor, why would this even happen? You know why I ask? It's because the doctor is the first line of defense. Yeah. And so if the doctor is getting it wrong with me, who should I be going to? Uh, it, uh, that's a very good question. And uh, I just want to sum it up in uh, one sentence. Our healthcare system is stretched out. Mm -hmm. We have few doctors. They're qualified. I think I've traveled around the world. Kenyan doctors are a top class, mm. well-trained. Uh, but for us to uh, pin down some of these things without taking the patient through, uh, like shooting in the dark mm -hmm. for so many years, then you let the patient go into a uh, high risk level mm -hmm. of cancer. We need to relook into our training uh, for higher learning institutions and how we train our doctors. I've seen through all our chapters all the scientists who are involved in research within this hospital, they are doctors, medical doctors. Doctor, in, allow me to butt in. You involved lose, in research. Just, just allow me to butt in. Yes. Because you're losing me a bit. Yes. You said that from the different parts of the country, you've in this country and even beyond that you've been to, yes. our Kenyan doctors are highly trained. Did you yes. say that? Yes. But then you're also saying that we need to be looking into how we train our doctors in the institutions of higher learning. Help me reconcile. Blending uh, medical treatment with research. All right. You know, uh, as a researcher, you're always thinking about how, why, and what if. Mm -hmm. But if you're not having that curious mind of looking beyond what the patient is telling you and what you want to treat, mm -hmm. then you'll just say, okay, that's in malaria, you treat and they go. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's beyond the class kind of training? Yes, beyond the class kind of training. Okay. Uh, upscaling our doctors to think of research oh, yeah okay. have that extra lens to see yeah then we we need to have centers of excellence true centers of excellence when it comes like you see our universities the way they were made KU is school of education uh, University of Nairobi school of medicine and engineering and law but now the, the our centers of Egerton school of agriculture yes. we need to have centers of excellence mm -hmm. Yeah, in certain area that if you go, like right now, if you go to KNH, I would vouch for Kenyatta Hospital, mm -hmm. uh, despite all the stories people say, mm -hmm. you'd get the, the best there mm -hmm. because they're a center of excellence. Mm -hmm. So that we also need to think about as a country going forward mm -hmm. and also as Africa. I hear so you. that you pick it from the word go. Mm -hmm. Family history also tie in there. Mm -hmm. So our doctors need to think, have an extra lens of research mm -hmm. to be trained, and that's where we come in. Okay, yes. I hear you. And you know, just look, saying, I mean, listening to you saying about schools of excellence, it reminds me that this is a conversation that we have had some time back, that can we revert back to that? That when you hear Institution X, you know, this is tailor-made for this particular cause. Yes. As opposed to now where we're having everything, even, you know, hotel management at KU, and <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that wasn't the case. You I have hear to you. be known for something. I hear you. Yes. Well said. Yeah. Now, Joyce, now let's come to treatment. And just earlier on, you had talked about the first, uh, the first instance of diagnosis for your daughter, borrowing from that experience with your husband. You decided very quickly, let me take my daughter to India. And before this conversation, I was just telling the story of how we are sort of like revamping even our facilities. Look at KUTRH, having the latest facility as far as cancer treatment is concerned. We're having the same at KNH. In fact, there are some equipments that were even bought for KMTC, Kenya Medical Training College, for the same. But anytime we are hearing of cancer cases and patients, we are so quick 
to think about abroad yeah. or outside the country yeah from my husband's mm -hmm. experience you know at times you would go to hospital you told today we don't have this medicine come mm -hmm. maybe after a week cancer spreads first mm -hmm. i think we don't have emergency in the the sense of urgency mm -hmm. in kenya mm -hmm. Also for radiotherapy, mm. you'll go, you're told, the machine broke down, come next week. Mm. Yeah, so many people prefer to go to India because for them, once you get there, the tests are done. Within one, one week, you have everything and the treatment will go very fast and mm -hmm. it's also cheaper. Mm. Yeah. That was another thing, the expense bit of it. Yeah. That in India, for instance, it's cheaper compared to Kenya. Oh, yeah. You have had both experiences. Yes. You know, the treatment in Kenya and the treatment in India. And you've rightfully elaborated for us the comparisons, at least between these two areas. Has, that, has there been a point where you have had treatment for your daughter here in Kenya? Or the moment you began in India, that was it? Well, we still see a doctor here for checkups. Okay. Yeah, once in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from your perspective. But they have to keep calling the other doctor yeah. Oh, yeah. to. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. They, they constantly have to keep calling to the communicate. Doctor in India. Yes. Yes. Much as because he underwent transplant. You know, transplant. They started doing bone marrow transplant in Kenya. I think this year or last year. Mm. Yeah. So they mm. they they don't have experience on that. So the transplant, transplant just began last year? Yeah, here in yeah, Kenya. Here in Kenya. Yeah. And yet you've been having people with the series of wanting to undergo this transplant. Yes. So this is why they would opt for treatment abroad. Yeah. Yeah. Now you talked about the expensiveness of it and also just juxtaposing mm. the two that outside it's a bit cheaper yeah. compared to the country. Yeah, like the, the chemo medicines. Mm -hmm. The prices in India, I think it's double triple here in kenya why 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 is that why do you think that that's the case i have no idea maybe no taxes idea. Uh, maybe, maybe taxes uh, uh, yeah uh, you know i'm just trying to ask, ask this yeah. so that maybe for anyone who's watching even in the you know sitting in the ministry for instance they can be looking at some of these things yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe to answer that okay india is a manufacturing hub with all the big farmers uh, pharmaceutical companies having their base in india because of we, we want to don't want to say cheap labor <laughs> affordable mm -hmm. uh, labor in India also India uh, through their training they have centers of excellence dating so many years so cost of production what you are saying yes so they are more specialized they have a huge population mm -hmm. and they 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 have it with they have it they've they've made it like a culture yeah to be the best so the cost of production in the india is very low uh -huh. because you'll find even most man manufacturing plants pharmaceutical companies in the u.s they still produce in india uh -huh. to supply uh, africa and other parts of the world uh -huh. yes so from where you sit is there anything we can do to perhaps maybe maybe not as affordable as it could be in india but to just reduce that price a bit because with many cancer patients you talk to yeah. Much as we would agree that NHIF in its own in its own entity would play a role, but some would say not to the maximum. It gets to a point where by now you just have to do it by yourself. I said we've had so many cases of people having to sell land, having to you know constantly be asking for donations for some of this treatment. So then, is there something we can do about maybe our manufacturing, maybe reduce the taxes? I don't know. Is there something that's, we can do? That's a that's a wonderful question. But before I answer that, yeah. which is very, I want to add something on the first question you asked, which was very important to my colleague Joyce, uh -huh. about having wonderful equipment, the cyber knife in uh, KU and uh -huh. other places. You know, those are beautiful equipment we have in the, they are there, they're available. Uh -huh. But what we need to do in Africa is to operationalize those equipment. Uh -huh. You can have the latest iPhone 14 or 15, but you're only using two apps on that phone at any given mm -hmm. time. So we need to think through our KMTCs. The most important people in this series are not only doctors. Mm -hmm. We have biomedical engineers coming from KMTCs. If I was the Minister for Health, I would think of how to have as many biomedical engineers being churned out. Because we have beautiful equipment in all referral hospitals, but they're not operationalized. Mm -hmm. Number two, the government So they're just sitting there? Yeah, they're sitting there. I mean, no one can run them. 
it's like having an aeroplane and you are building an aeroplane that flying it at the same time mm. so we need to think of how to capacity build on biomedical engineers most of them are out here mm -hmm. they they are the engine of hospitals and we need to think about them mm. they're being trained well from kmtc's and technical colleges and also universities. Mm. We also need to think about having uh, application specialists. Okay. Yeah. Who will now? Who understands these machines? They ensure that it's running and producing results for doctors, mm -hmm. readily interpreted. Then back to the question you've asked uh, about uh, reducing cost of production in Kenya for cancer drugs. Mm -hmm. I've worked in the pharmaceutical industry for for so many since I left school. Mm -hmm. And even the, I've worked for Roche mm -hmm. Pharmaceuticals, I've worked for Myland Pharmacy, all from all big American farmers. But we have to think on how to support uh, the local pharmaceutical companies. I saw what uh, the CS, our CS courier was talking about. Mm -hmm. People only thinking about uh, Mtumdogo and Hawkers, but no, they're not thinking about manufacturing mm -hmm. and healthcare. Mm -hmm. There are so many manufacturing companies, including the only WHO accredited plant in Africa, here based in Kikuyu, in, based in Kenya. Yeah. So we need to find, uh, put in policies that protect the local pharmaceutical companies because they, we have local capacity to produce drugs that can be cheaply bought in our market. Mm -hmm. Instead of allowing everyone to come and set up shop here directly, they're killing the retail, mm -hmm. and then we lose out, we buy drugs expensively. Things you. that can be produced here mm -hmm. in industrial area. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they are being produced. It's mm -hmm. not that we don't have pharmaceutical. Mm -hmm. We have very good pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yes. I almost lost track of time. Just being reminded that we have five minutes to exit this space. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's just because it's quite important for us to also think beyond the box and how we can make the playing field level so that we yeah. can have the better um, services. But just before we get to close, Joyce, I mean, as a, as a caregiver, what, which gender would you say is most predisposed to this LFS? And whichever gender it is, why? I think I've, I've noted more women. I don't know why, <laughs> but I see more girls and, and more women, maybe because of breast cancer. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, mm. more, so we, can, we, sh we can say that sort of like more women are predisposed to this LFS, which would in turn say that we would be having numerous cancer cases. And it also Amongst seems you. like the gene, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's true, but the gene looks like it comes from dad to daughter to, to son. I don't know. I, it looks like it has a pattern. In that manner? Yes. Is that the case? I, I don't know if it's the case. <laughs> He's the researcher. That, yes, yeah. I wanted to finish first. Yes. Uh, th that's true, mm -hmm. but not in all cases. Okay. It's an inherited gene uh, running across families. Across the family. Yes, yes. All right. Okay, so we can't say that a specific gender is yeah. more... So far, we can't quite, you know, ascertain that. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, as we begin to wrap up this conversation, let me just start with you, Dr. Ari. What is it that you would want stakeholders to know? And when I say stakeholders, also, I'm talking about um, even the ministry, for instance. I'm talking about um, the doctors as well, because you just did make a very good point as far as manufacturing is concerned. We can't keep going abroad or India for treatment when we have our very own expertise yeah. in the country. Uh, don't forget your question, right? Yeah, I'm asking what, what more would you want various stakeholders in the health docket to know? Okay. Yeah. That's a good question. So first of all, I want to highlight uh, one point quickly. Is that uh, Liframini syndrome, we thought in the past that it's one out of 5,000 pe people in the, within the population. Mm -hmm. But that's no longer the case. We are getting more and more cases. So what we need to do is put cancer to the test. That should be our hashtag as, as, as a country, mm -hmm. as a continent. We need to do early screening, yeah? Get it uh, while it's still early. Mm -hmm. Or even uh, think about technologies that would uh, look at the risks mm -hmm. and uh, the probability of you developing cancer. Mm -hmm. So we need to do more awareness uh, and training for our doctors, and that's why our association is here, mm -hmm. and ensure that we do continuous training for them mm -hmm. through conferences, uh, in-house training, organizing specialized training for them, 
uh, creating a platform that links them to other experts across the world where they can share knowledge, especially when you go to our website. Mm -hmm. And all these... And invest so much, we are asking the government to yes. invest in genomics, mm -hmm. gene testing, mm -hmm. because uh, genetic testing is very accurate, very specific, mm -hmm. and it never tells. It gives more details. Mm -hmm. So it gives doctors easy time instead of trying to predict. It summarizes for you in a report. Mm -hmm. And technology is now quite advanced, All right. where once you test, it, the machine automatically generates a report that the doctor would just read. I hear you. Yes. Well so said. it gives what we call precision medicine. Mm -hmm. Very accurate, summarized, and timely. Okay. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Joyce, very quickly, on the aspect of families yes. as a caregiver, mm -hmm. what message would you have for them? I think once you start noticing that, so my sister died of breast cancer, mm -hmm. my if there is cancer in your family, it's mm. good to ask the doctor or to go for screening. Mm. Yeah, okay. you don't have to wait until when you're sick. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm hearing a lot of training and early screening and detection. Yes. Well said. Mm. I mean, there's really a lot we could have talked about, including collaborative yes. uh, measures, but we are strapped for time and we have to cap it at this particular point. Well, maybe just one in summary. We need uh, a policy on Liframini syndrome all right. as a country and all countries in Africa. Mm -hmm and just talk about Liframini syndrome early enough, put cancer to the test okay. as we do it for the patient. I hear you. Thank yes. you so much. And definitely appreciate your valuable inputs into this conversation, mm -hmm. Asante. Thanks. I have been speaking to Joyce Wamboe Mwangi, who's a caregiver and director of communications at LFS Africa, and also Dr. Samuel Oliech Omolo, the LFS chapter chair. What has definitely formed center of our discussion is looking at LFS, that is the Liframini syndrome, and just what ripple effect it would have on the different kind of cancers that we talk about. Good place to end this conversation, and ultimately, good morning, Kenya. From me and on behalf of the entire team, Asante Sana, till tomorrow, good morning. <laughs>